Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and today I want to make a reply video to Metatron. Um, if you follow Metatron like I do, then you'll know that he has recently made a video about the Frogmouth style Great Helm. Um, this is an iconic style of helm which um, Metatron's very excited because he's getting one soon, which is awesome. Um, one of the things that he says a lot, and, and this kind of seems to be the main point of that video, is talking about how the Frogmouth Great Helm is incredibly protective and great for jousting, and I completely agree with that. Um, one of the things that you'll find is that some of the aspects of the Frogmouth Great Helm that are extremely protective are actually sometimes found in other helmets as well. So my own jousting armet has some aspects of it which are very similar to a frogmouth helm in that the lower face part sticks out further than the upper part and uh, um, there is a lip here where the eye, uh, eye slot is. This overlap is very important for jousting and is um, actually found on an awful lot of helmets from the 15th century. Even things like sallets have this because it's not only useful with jousting, by the way people did use sallets for jousting just just to let you know. Uh, it's not only useful for jousting but obviously things like arrows coming in will strike in a very similar way to a lance in a joust. Now one of the things that I that Metatron said which I just wanted to challenge was the classic line that when you're jousting you tilt your head back at the very last moment. This is something that has been said a lot and I hear people saying it all the time. It's in the film A Knight's Tale. His technique, rudimentary style, non-existent still. He's fearless. And not only that, I think I've seen it in books as well. I've definitely heard lots of reenactors and historians share that kind of information. But it's not actually true. Now, um, like I said, I don't actually know where it came from. I think it's probably a Victorian idea. I do wonder actually if it's from these kind of paintings which show someone really leaning back in their horse. I think what these are actually showing, however, is just after an impact, someone, uh, this one's quite clear, someone's been hit and they're almost falling out of their saddle. But if you look at some of the documents from the period, you actually find that the jousting masters of the period advise exactly the opposite, that you need to keep your eyes on your um, opponent all the way through the joust. One of the masters that said this is Duarte, and unfortunately I don't have a full translation. They're not available online, and I do need to grab um, a copy of his book. But he says that you need to keep your eyes on your opponent all the way through the pass um, so that you can target. This is extremely important when you're thinking about the um, Frogmouth Great Helm itself. The Frogmouth Great Helm attaches, especially the late ones, um, such as the one that Metatron's having made, attaches to the cuirass either with buckles or with bolts. So any movement that you want to do with your head is also going to need to move your torso. Now something you'll also know guys is that um, lances in most of these jousts are actually being rested and, uh, um, and steadied on a lance rest or an arete de cuirasse. This is a little arm that comes out of the breastplate that the lance attaches to. Some of these, if you're using a really heavy lance in a very um, particular type of joust, would even have an extra arm coming out the back, like a cradle to hold the back part of the lance as well. So actually a lot of the targeting that is being done is being done with your full torso but also with adjustments by the hand as well. This means that if you actually were to do what um, it suggests in a knight's tale 
and raise your head at the last minute. His technique, rudimentary style, non-existent. You would actually need to raise your entire body, which would throw your lance um, targeting way off. So hopefully that's uh, um, helpful guys. I just want to say I really did enjoy the video and there were lots of really good points. I particularly liked the, uh, the point that Metatron made towards the end where he was basically saying that war armor is not just about protection and that the most protected thing is a, is a steel cube. It's absolutely right. War armor is not about protection first and foremost. It is about making you a better fighter and protecting you to a certain extent is exactly what you need to be if you are fighting, but uh, um, it's not the main aim. He keeps his eye on the target. A true hunter. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Please do check out all of the links down below. You can find links to my Patreon, my merch shop, all of those sorts of things. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like, share, subscribe, all of those great things. And um, just before I go, I'd just like to say thank you, Metatron, again, for all of the content that you've been delivering. Uh, I really liked your video. It's just that one thing that I uh, thought I should comment on. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.